Welcome back. Our today's topic is approaching text through post-structuralist theory. Post-structuralist theory emerged in the late 20th century as a response to structuralism, focusing on the instability of meaning and the decentering of authority. Applying post-structuralist principles to a text involves examining how language constructs reality, questioning power dynamics, and exploring the fluidity of meaning. Let's break down some key concepts and apply them to an examples. Deconstruction. Post-structuralists argue that language is inherently unstable, and, that meaning is always deferred. Deconstruction involves analyzing texts to reveal contradictions, ambiguities, and multiple interpretations. Example, applying deconstruction to Franz Kafka's The Metamorphosis, one might deconstruct the protagonist Gregor Samsa's transformation into a giant insect. Instead of seeking a definitive meaning, one could explore how this transformation challenges notions of identity, societal norms, and communication within the family. Binary Oppositions Post-Structuralist Critique Binary Oppositions for example, male versus female, good versus evil, as arbitrary constructs, that uphold power dynamics and limit understanding. Example, in Virginia Woolf's Orlando, the protagonist undergoes a gender transformation across centuries. Post-structuralist analysis would question traditional gender binaries and explore how Orlando's fluid identity disrupts fixed categories, inviting readers to reconsider societal norms. Power and discourse. Post-structuralists examine how power operates through language and discourse, shaping social structures and marginalizing certain voices. Example, in Harper Lee's To Kill a Mockingbird, a post-structuralist analysis might focus on the power dynamics underlying racial discourse in the southern United States. By deconstructing the language used to justify racism, the analysis could reveal how power is maintained through language and ideology. Intertextuality. Post-structuralists emphasize the interconnectedness of texts arguing that meaning is derived from relationships between texts rather than inherent in individual works. Example, James Joyce's, Ulysses, is rich with intertextuality, referencing mythology, literature, and history. A post-structuralist reading would explore, how these intertextual references disrupt, linear narrative and challenge, notions of authorship and originality. Rhizomatic thinking. Post-structuralist advocate for rhizomatic thinking, which rejects hierarchical structures, in favor of interconnected networks of meaning. Example, in a post-structuralist analysis of a poem like T.S. Eliot's, The Wasteland, the focus might shift from, identifying a single, authoritative interpretation to, tracing the interconnected themes, images, and voices that weave through the text, embracing the multiplicity of meanings. In short we can say, one can uncover layers of meaning, challenge dominant narratives, and open up new possibilities for interpretation, by applying these post-structuralist concepts to literary texts. Thanks for watching. Please stay with us for more content.